Jacobs, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. And it's good to see you. We're just doing a live show on you must be born again. And looking at the words born again, what does it mean to be born again? Uh, so let's come before the Lord and ask his blessings. Lord, we come before you today and we acknowledge our weakness and failure. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness and cleansing today. We acknowledge that you are God. And Father, I pray you breathe, breathe your life in this show. And I pray that everyone who hears this video, Father, that they'll be blessed and encouraged and know your love and grace and that they'll come to know you by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you breathe life into them they might come to know you as Lord and Saviour in Jesus name Amen okay uh, what we're doing is we're looking at the word born again so we return to the Bible and we turn to John chapter 3 it says now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this man came to Jesus by night and said to him Rabbi we know that you are a teacher for come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not marvel that I said to you you must be born again the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes so it is everyone who is born of the spirit Nicodemus said to him how can these things be and Jesus answered him are you the teacher of Israel yet you do not understand these things truly truly I say to you we speak of what we know and we bear witness to what we see but you do not receive our testimony if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things no, is it, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descends from heaven the son of man as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may not have, may have eternal life. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at what does it mean to be born again? Many people have um, strange ideas about Christianity. They think Christianity is about uh, doing rules and regulations. It's about being told what to do and things like that but that's not Christianity Christianity is about being born again now the Greek word for born again means born from above what it means is the Holy Spirit of God comes into your heart and gives you a heart of love for God and to be born again is to be born of the Spirit of God and God wants you to have a relationship with him through his Holy Spirit that's what God wants for you he wants that relationship with you he wants to be in relationship with you and the way to be in relationship is to be born again now in this passage Nicodemus a rabbi came to Jesus at night and was talking to Jesus at night now Nicodemus was very learned he knew his Old Testament very well many people might know the Bible but it doesn't mean to say that you know God you might know your Quran but it doesn't mean to say you know God you might know many intellectual and logical things but it doesn't mean to say that you know God as your friend now Nicodemus was religious but he had to realize that he needed to be born again he had to be born of the Spirit if you wanna have a relationship with God you got to be born of the Spirit Philippians chapter 3 
Philippians 3, 4 and 7. It says, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, also if anyone else thinks he has reason to, for confidence in the flesh, I am more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a son of as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law blameless. But whatsoever gain I had, I counted it all as loss for the sake of Christ. You see, Paul was a learned Pharisee like Nicodemus. He knew the Old Testament. He knew all about God. But he says he, he sees it as dung compared to Jesus Christ. He sees it as nothing compared to Jesus Christ. And you see, no matter how religious you are, or even how good you are, it's nothing compared to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what it is to be born again, is to put your faith in Christ and to have the Holy Spirit come into your life. Nicodemus was religious, but he needed to have a relationship with God. Nicodemus was seeking. He wanted to know God. He was seeking for God. Are you seeking? It's no good as an atheist arguing all the time, debating on Google Hangouts and arguing and debating. But you'll never know God unless you really seek. It's the same with it. if you're religious, you'll never know God unless you seek. Hebrews 11.6 Hebrews 11.6 It says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for, where, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. If you're going to know God, you've got to seek him. You've got to seek him, or you'll never find him. Nicodemus was challenged. The Lord Jesus Christ challenged him. He didn't pamper him. God's not going to pamper you. He's not going to pat you on the back. He's going to tell you what you really like. And you know when you go into a mirror and you look at a mirror and you see in the mirror your spots or anything that's wrong with your face in the morning or you, you need to shave or maybe put your lipstick on or whatever. And you look in the mirror. When you read the Bible, it's looking in the mirror and God will show you your failings, your sins. And you're not going to like it, what you see, when he shows you who you really like. God will challenge you. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verse 3 and 8. John 3, 3 and 8. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus says, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Unless one, and Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? And be born, and Jesus answered, Truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter uh, the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus, when he heard you must be born again, he thought he had to be born physically again. But Jesus was saying, No, you've got to be born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. My friends, you can't know God unless the Holy Spirit shows you. You can't get it to know God purely by intellect. It's impossible. You need the Spirit of God to open your eyes. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 10 and 13. says the things God has revealed to us through the Spirit for the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God 
the spirit searches the depths of God for who knows the person's thoughts except the spirit of the person which is in him so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God the only one who knows God is God that is his spirit and you need the Holy Spirit to understand God you can go on Google Hangouts and you can argue about atheism and Christianity all you want but until the Holy Spirit touches you you'll never see you can go to church or mosque or do anything you want to do religiously but until the Holy Spirit opens your eyes you will not see God you need the Spirit of God let's turn to Ezekiel 36 25 Ezekiel 36 uh, 25 27 I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will clean you and I will give you a new heart a new spirit I will put in you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh God will take your hard heart and give you a new heart he'll take your heart of flesh and give you a heart of his Holy Spirit that's what God will do by his Holy Spirit you must be born again Nicodemus was religious he was challenged and he was loved John 316 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life God loved Nicodemus and he loves you Romans 5 8 Romans 5 8 but God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us God showed you his love because he came down in Jesus Christ and died on a cross for you that's what he did for you my friend John 15 13 John 15 13 greater love of n has no one than this that someone laid down his life for his friends greater love has none than this that he ever lays his life for his friends and Christ loved you because he died for you on that cross for all your sin and my sin all the sin that you committed all the sin that I committed the Savior died for you that's what he did So Nicodemus was loved and Nicodemus was warned. John 3.18 John 3.18 We read these words Whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son. If we don't believe in Jesus we're condemned. It's believing in him that saves and it's rejecting of him that damns us we got to believe in him and there's many many scriptures that we can look at but I want to turn to Titus chapter 3 verse 5 and then we're gonna close Titus 3 5 says he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit he saved us by the renewal of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and making us anew that's what God did for you and me if we believe in Christ trust in Christ and he will show you his love and grace and his blessing he died for you on that cross if you confess your sins 
He will forgive you and come into your life. You must be born again. Born of the Holy Spirit. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with God. I'm going to say a prayer. And you can say this prayer after me. You can commit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Dear Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess all my sin and ask that you forgive me. I ask, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would come into my life and take control of it. And I pray that you would be with me. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you become born again today, you need to start reading your Bible and go to a local church where they teach the Bible and so that you grow in the knowledge of God. If you want me to encourage you, drop me a line at my Skype is jason.burns107, no capital letters, jason.burns107 and just Skype me and I, I'll get back to you if you need encouragement. Okay. Okay, if you have any questions, you can Google it under this video. So if you've got a question, please feel free to Google me underneath this video, and I'll answer the question if I can. So if you want to ans ask a question, um, please feel free to do so. So I'm... I'm on here and um, I'm willing to uh, take any questions if you want to ask a question uh, so feel free if you want to just google under the video and I'll pick it up somewhere along the line Okay, there doesn't seem to be any questions coming. I'll just check. I'll just check. Okay. There's no questions, so I'm going to close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for your love, and I just pray you bless this video for your glory, and I pray all those who came to hear these words, that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for coming and to the Google Hangar and to listen to what I have to say. Much appreciated. Keep your eye out. I'll be continuing making videos, and I hope you've been blessed. So take care, and God bless you.